It all starts with a yes. Like that, like, like all those little yeses on little glass pebbles. It starts with God's yes, spoken not just once, like in one time to one person, or once in general to creation, kind of as an abstract idea, but God's yes, over and over and over again to all creation, including to you and to me here and now, right now. And in a way, that's the story of our whole faith. It's God's repeated, determined, persistent, unrelenting yes to all creation. You know how the story goes. Probably in the beginning, God says, let there be light, and there's light. God says, yes, yes, light, good job, and blesses the light. God blesses the sea and the sky and the land and plants every creature, every animal, every human being, all of us as a collective thing called humanity, and each one of us, you and me, your neighbor, your friend, your stranger, enemies, everybody, God says, yes, I call you into being. Yes, you are good. Yes, you are made in my image. Yes, I choose you. I love you. Yes, I call you into being and I choose you for relationship. For all the ways that we reject that yes. And in some ways, the whole Christian story's way of talking about that when we use the, the technical word sin is a way of saying there's a bunch of ways we reject God's yes. We say no. Back to God's yes. We say, no, I don't want to be in relationship with you, or I don't want to be in relationship with you on your terms. I want you to be my pet or my mascot or my genie. God, you do my bidding rather than relationship on God's terms. Or we say, no, I don't want to have to love other people if I have to be in if I have to do that to be in a relationship with you. I want to treat other people like they're they're uh, objects to be used or, or like they don't matter, or I want to pick who I can selectively accept or love. We keep saying no. Back to God's yes. That's the, the essential conundrum, you could say, of the human story. We keep saying no to God's over and over and over, repeated, chosen, unconditional, determined yes. And we could say the Christian story also says God refuses to let our no be the last word. God refuses to let the conversation just end after one volley of yes and then our no. That God's willing even to enter into our humanity, to share our humanity among us, with us, and even to bear the worst, the loudest no we can, even when we nail our no up on a cross and put Jesus there. Even at our worst, God refuses to accept our no, refuses our rejection of relationship, refuses to accept our <laughs> saying no back to God, enters into humanity as one of us bringing us an alternative way of life that looks like what it's like to live in God's yes. And in resurrection says, God's yes is more powerful than all the deathly knows we say to God, to one another, to creation, to ourselves all around. And then God goes to yet even further lengths to let everybody in creation know that yes applies to them. That's the story that the church tells this coming Sunday, the story of the day of Pentecost for the first followers of Jesus. The, the initial gathering of Jesus' community, those handful of disciples who had known him uh, and, and walked with him, listened to him, shared tables with him, they were sort of getting their minds wrapped around the idea that Jesus, who had been dead, is alive again. But Jesus, in those days, is telling them, I'm not just alive again for your sake, you 12, you handful of disciples, but for the whole world. The whole world needs to know I say yes to you. The whole world needs to hear God's yes of inclusion of I'm bringing you into a new kind of community that's for all people. Jewish people, sure, but non-Jewish people, Gentiles, well-educated people from the best Greek schools and people who didn't know how to read, people uh, from the empire, people from right around Jesus' hometown, women and men and free and enslaved, everybody was to be included, including... Folks who didn't all speak the same language, have the same culture, or come from the same background. So, 50 days after Jesus' resurrection, it was also happened to be 50 days after Passover, so it happens to be this convenient sort of marker where people were already gathering in the city of Jerusalem to celebrate this Jewish harvest festival, Pentecost. On that day, God sets in motion another yes moment. God's 
Holy Spirit, the same spirit that broods over the chaos and the darkness at creation as God says yes to the light and yes to the sea and the sky and to human beings. That same spirit now breaks out over Jesus' followers and empowers them to speak so that they can be heard and understand in every language of everybody there gathered in the city. People from different ethnic groups, nationalities, language groups, cultures, people who were scattered across the empire but had come back to the city to celebrate Pentecost. But for all their difference and diversity, God says yes to them and lets them all know about what God has done in Jesus, being willing to bear the worst of our no in the cross and to say yes over that again in resurrection and to say this is for you to a yes that is spoken in every language that the people there could possibly bring they could hear and understand this is for you this yes is for you and now we followers of Jesus for 2,000 years at our best moments understand that's our purpose. How do we echo that same yes of God and bring it to other people? Have, having heard it from God, you are chosen, claimed, beloved. Yes, God says to you. Now we pass that along to other people so that they will know about how God has said yes to them in Jesus. Yes to them in Jesus' resurrection. Yes to life beyond the power of death. And yes to include people from every walk of life, every background, nationality, culture, and self-expression. God calls and says yes far and why. And in our lives, in our, in our organized life as church, we, we, we represent that moment, we celebrate that moment, we, we sort of hear it and see it embodied when we gather around the waters of the font in baptism, when often some infant, a baby maybe only a few days or weeks old, hears God's yes spoken over them. And we all watch and go, wow, this baby didn't have to do anything first. It's not that God said, well, I see that you're going to become an all-star, or I see you're going to become very uh, pious or wealthy, or I see you're going to contribute. It's God just in all your helplessness says, I choose you. Yes, just like God says yes to the light in creation before the light even exists. God says yes to us before we've done a thing. That yes starts the conversation. And as we grow up in faith, as we grow in our lives in maturity and understand what it is that God has said yes to us, started relationship with us, come to us in Jesus, born the worst of our hatefulness, violence, and evil, and our no in crucifying Jesus, and still says yes to us. As we grow in that, at some point you realize you want to say yes back. You want to say, yeah, I want to be a part of that. Yes, that, that's for me. I want to be a part of what God's doing, not only to keep hearing God's yes for me, but to pass that along to somebody else who is waiting to hear it, especially to people who have picked up the idea, whether just assuming it or had somebody directly tell them, this is not for you, you are not acceptable, God's love does not include you, especially for those folks to say, it is for you, this is for you, God's yes is for you. On this coming Sunday, when we celebrate the story of Pentecost and God's spirit being poured out to empower Jesus' followers to say that yes, far and wide, in every language possible, we also have the tradition in our congregations of some of our young people in the faith who have gone through deeper learning about the story of the Bible and our faith tradition. They are confirmed in the faith. They affirm their baptism, which is simply a fancy churchy way of saying they say yes back to the God who has already first said yes to them in creation, in the cross and resurrection of Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, in the waters of their baptism, and every day, in a sense, every day of life is God continuing to say yes to you. Every day we wake up, there's a world here. It's God saying, yes, let's do it all again. I know you're going to keep saying no to me. I know you're going to keep rejecting me, but I say yes to you, confident that eventually that yes wears on us and makes us into the kind of people who echo a yes back to God. So on Sunday, come, be with us in worship as we get to celebrate that yes, not only of God to us, but to see young ones among us and then for us to have the chance to echo our yes back to God and say, I do want to continue being a part of your community, your new way of life, yes to that. And we're actually going to give everybody, everybody in worship, one of these little fire-colored pebbles that has the word yes on it. 
We want you to know that's God's yes for you. And you might just keep it in your pocket. You might just remember every time you look at it, God has already said yes to you. And the backside then is open. What will you say in this day? How will I say yes back to God? How will I echo God's yes and be a part of God's amazing ongoing work to bring all people to know the love of God and the amazing grace we found that's found us in Jesus? So that's the conversation this Sunday. That's the celebration we get to be a part of, and there's a place for you. God has already said yes to you. This is the chance to echo your yes back. See you Sunday.